Welcome back to another episode of Handlebar Ventures. Today's ride is one of my favorites. Today we're going to do a bike review of Brian's Gorilla Gravity Trail Pistol. This Gorilla Gravity Trail Pistol here is a size 2. I run it in the long mode setting. So the Trail Pistol was originally set up as 130, 120. Currently I have it set up as 140, 130 in the back. And you do this by changing the shock stroke to 210 by 55 instead of 210 by 50 gives you an extra 10 millimeter of travel. And what that extra travel really does is gives you a little bit more progression for those bigger hits and makes it a little bit softer off the top. A lot of other bike manufacturers do this as well, so just transition. They allow you to run a different shock stroke length uh, to kind of tailor the bike to suit your riding style and terrain a little bit better. Brian, how do you have the suspension set up on this bike? Suspension setup right now is pretty much right at factory settings. Uh, Push does a great job of tailoring the setup exactly how you need it. Uh, I've tweaked the rebound a little bit to make it uh, slower for my needs with how I like to ride it. And the fork is pretty much true to rock shock setup. So Brian, you've had this bike for going on three riding seasons now? Yeah. Have you had any issues with the bike? So I just had one minor issue, and that is with the threads in the chain stay to seat stay pivot bolt. Um, they stripped out on me while I was changing it from the Nirvana to the trail pistol. I talked to Gorilla Gravity on the phone and they had me a new chain stay in the mail that week. Got it swapped over. Everything was good. And this was covered under warranty. It was all under warranty, no hassles. So Brian, everyone wants to know, people have probably heard that this bike's a little bit on the heavy side. How much does it weigh? Yeah, she's thick. Um, as it sits, obviously it's ready to ride right now. It's 31 pounds. I was expecting it to be closer to 35. Uh, this is actually the first time I've ever weighed it. And I was really thinking like 34, 35 pounds. Uh, the, the push shock is like a pound and a half extra versus a regular inline air shock. The Enduro wheels, a lot adds up. Yeah, I think if you wanted to do a weight weenie build of this bike, you could probably get it into the 27, 28 pound range, maybe even less if you want the Sid fork. But this frame is heavy, it's stout, it's stiff. Uh, you know, it's not a weight weenies bike. And if you do that, you're detracting from what this bike's good at. Going fast. So we just mentioned how much this bike weighs. Brian, how does it feel when you're pedaling it uphill? It has an absurd amount of traction. When I'm pedaling this thing uphill, especially with the coil shock, roots, rocks, climbing uphill is no problem. Uh, I really try to stay in a seated position. Uh, keeps my heart rate down, first of all. And it has so much traction that it's very comfortable to sit down and pedal. It has a 78 degree seat tube angle. So if it's steep, not steep, technical, smooth trails, either way, it's comfortable seated. It gives you a nice centered position on the bike. Yeah, but if there's a real techie section, you know, it's plenty powerful enough to stand up and pedal and transfer the power forward and not just bob the suspension. So when you do stand up the pedal, the suspension platform has enough support for you that it's going to sort of lurch forward versus just bob? It goes forward. You can tell that it bobs. Obviously, it's I mean, it's a coil shock. It, it's going to be soft off the top, but it does propel you forward. Do you feel like this bike gets hung up when you're climbing? If you hit roots and rocks, things like that, does the rear end sort of pick up and out of the way? Or do you feel those roots and you kind of get slowed up a little bit when you hit them? Definitely does not get hung up on the roots and rocks and things like that as we're climbing. Uh, it's active suspension and it really absorbs all the bumps and everything while you're climbing and just keeps you moving forward. I think part of that is due to the coil shock. If you had an air shock, it would probably feel a little bit less supple off the top and you might get hung up a little bit more, but in trade-off, you're also probably getting a little bit firmer suspension pedaling platform. More efficient with an air shock, maybe. Plus, you know, probably about a pound of weight savings. Brian, how's this bike feel when you're heading into the tight, twisty sections of the climb? If you're doing switchbacks and things like that, does the bike feel long or cumbersome? Uh, tight, twisty sections are actually generally pretty good. I actually run this in a long position, like we stated earlier. Um, it's a size two, which really I could have gone a size three, but for East Coast tech and how I ride, I prefer the size two, and it gets me around those tight turns very easily and comfortably. What's the reach on this? Uh, the reach is 458 to 468, depending if you have it in a short or long version. Yeah, and the chain stays are pretty short on this bike, too. They're like 430. The chain stays on the current version are 430 millimeter. Do you ever feel like the bike wants to sit backwards with the shorter chain stays? 
No, because of that seat tube angle, it's, it's really stable when climbing, even when standing. It really just maintains its position and keeps tracking uphill well. All right, so we just talked about how this bike goes up. Ryan, how's it go down? Favorite part, coming down. Uh, this bike is really capable. It loves going fast. You will find that it has a limit that you, you won't quite have with the, the higher travel versions, such as the Smash or the Nirvana, which is the Enduro bike. Is that speed limit that you're talking about more so from rougher terrain or just in general a top speed limit that the bike starts to feel a little bit unstable? Like if you're on a flow trail and you're just mobbing down 30 mile an hour, are you scared? No, you're going full blast, mock turkey speeds, no end in sight. Yeah, and on that flow trail, I mean, how's it feel in the corners? Uh, it's really good in the corners. It maintains the line well. It's going to snap you out of the corners as long as you really put the effort into the turn. Yeah, if you press through the turn, it's kind of going to reward you and snap you back out yeah. of it. That short rear end, I think, makes it feel pretty Yeah, the playful. chain stays being really short really snap you around the corners quick. Yeah, for sure. How's this bike feel jumping? I don't know. I don't get airborne. <laughs> Brian, how's this bike feel on the ground? <laughs> it's good. It goes on the ground a lot. I crash. <laughs> If you get into a little bit slower speed section of trail, maybe some like cross country style stuff, it's not super gnarly. Um, it's a little bit more flat. How's this bike feeling that? Does it feel like it's overbiked or does it feel like it kind of fits right at home? Uh, small cross country chattery stuff. It, it may feel like it's overbiked, but it depends on the rider. I think a lot, it, it's really going to plow over that kind of stuff or you could pump through it or you could jump over it. So Brian, your first ride with the trail pistol, you took it to Bryce Mountain Resort? So Bryce, uh, its terrain is really kind of smooth, bike park trails, some high speed chatter, small rocks and stuff like that. A lot of flow trails, some, some good jump lines. Uh, bike Ham did it great. That was actually the first ride there. Uh, very supportive suspension platform, you know, hit the jumps and things like that. It, it never felt harsh bottoming it out. Definitely had enough progression every time you case a jump, you just, you know, didn't bottom out. Maybe not every time, but a couple step ups that I, I cased pretty hard and especially with the push the hydraulic bottom out you don't feel that harsh bottom out on it at all so at bryce when you're ripping the berms hitting the harder compressions things like that did the bike blow through its travel quickly or did it feel supportive so that definitely did not blow through its travel it stayed very supportive throughout the turns the big compressions and really the, the other g outs too with there's breaker bumps and things like that mixed into the terrain and so it stayed right in that mid-stroke while you're in the berm? Or yeah, it in stays in the mid-stroke and, and keeps you tracking well through the turn, even if there's rocks, roots, or which there's not a lot of it, Bryce, but mainly breaker bumps there. Keeps you holding traction and maintaining your line. So we're talking about flow trails. How's the bike feel when things get a little bit gnarlier? Chris, in rougher terrain, the bike really holds its speed well, doesn't get hung up on square edge hits, and keeps its momentum moving forward. There's really rough sections of rock gardens and roots doesn't get bounced around a lot, and really maintains its line and tracks well. So Brian, you have the trail pistol set up, and you also have the Nirvana. Is there any steep rock rolls that you would not hit with this bike that you would with Nirvana? Absolutely not. Uh, the geometry on this thing is definitely progressive enough to feel comfortable on any rock roll that I would hit on the Nirvana. I'm gonna hit it differently. I'm gonna try to be much more precise with it. It's not as forgiving as the Nirvana but it's definitely still capable to do all the rock rolls and steep descents. All right, Brian, so who is this bike for? This is the Enduro Riders Down Country bike. It's built to last and it's made to go fast. What I mean by that, it's a it's great all around bike. It's, it's more focused on the downhills than the uphills. It's for the ride that's not focused on getting PRs going uphill, um, just all out having fun. And maybe you're in between bikes or you just want one bike. Uh, this is going to be it. How does this bike compare versus other down country or trail bikes like the Epic Evo? So the Epic Evo is going to be much more efficient. It's obviously going to be a lot lighter. I think the Epic Evo is right around 24 to 27 pounds, depending on the spec. The Epic Evo is going to climb a lot faster. Uh, it's not going to wear you down as much on a longer ride. Uh, this bike will be more comfortable. It'll be much more fun on the descents and obviously more capable and maybe better for the terrain that you're riding. I would agree with all those statements as an Epic Evo rider. Let's take a look at the other side of the spectrum. This bike is the Enduro Riders Down Country bike, as you've said. How does it compare versus a true Enduro bike? So 
So true enduro bike is going to be, obviously it's going to be much more forgiving with the amount of travel it has. Definitely more rough feeling than the Nirvana. Still not jarring, which is pretty impressive. It's not going to maintain the speed or be nearly as comfortable on the rougher sections of trail as your enduro bike. But yeah, you're not going to have to be as precise on an enduro bike. You can kind of just point and shoot. Um, and basically anything that's in your way, you're just gonna kind of mash over compared to a bike like this. You gotta be a little bit more precise, which. But if you're looking for one bike, this can do any of that. I mean, I would feel more than comfortable taking this to snowshoe bike park and taking down some black trails there. Just yeah. gonna be at a slower pace. Yeah, I agree. This truly is a do it all bike. It's not gonna be as fast down as an enduro bike. It's not gonna be as fast uphill as a cross country bike. It's a great all around trail bike. In my opinion, the biggest downfall to Gorilla Gravity bikes is the weight. But with that weight, you do get the Rev technology, which is their impact resistant carbon, supposedly 300% more impact resistant versus traditional carbon. I've crashed into Brian a couple times. <laughs> Brian's crashed his bike quite a few times and it's no worse for wear at all. You, you, could, you would never know that this bike has been, you know, thrashed for three years. It really yeah. has held up well. It's got over two, 3,000 miles on it, and it's, you really can't tell. The paint is phenomenal still. Just a little rub marks on the, on the decals, and that's about it. Brian, in your opinion, is it worth paying the weight penalty for the Rev Carbon? How I ride? Yes. Uh, it's, it's very much worth it. Uh, the rock strikes and things like that, and Chris running into me. <clears throat> Uh, it's worth it. Uh, it's a little extra weight. Uh, it doesn't ride like it's 31 pounds. I mean, it's not insanely heavy uh, for a short travel trail bike. Another cool thing about Gorilla Gravity is all of their parts are available online on their website. So if you need replacement parts, you don't have to go through your bike shop or worry about ordering parts through them. If you need something in a pinch, you can just call them up, talk to someone directly at the factory, or just order it right through their website, which is in my opinion, it's a nice to have. There's been some times with Specialized where the parts have been back ordered, and if I knew that um, that part was available just for me to order off their website, I would have just had spares on hand. So if this is your only bike, it's nice to know that you have that customer service backing it up, as well as just the availability of parts. Because it's made in the USA, the lead times are a lot shorter than parts that are made overseas. Speaking of lead times, the lead time on a new frame from Gorilla Gravity is, I think... It's down, to, it's down to about two weeks, which is incredible. A lot of bikes are back ordered to a year out, you know, maybe next spring. Yeah, and it's been like that all throughout the pandemic. Gorilla Gravity has had bikes in stock or, you know, a, a few months at most. I think the longest lead time we saw was eight to 10 weeks on their website. That's, that's incredible going through the pandemic when people were saying, you know, you'll get a bike next year, maybe, or maybe it won't come in. That's one of the, that's really one of the main advantages of building in-house in Denver, Colorado, made in the USA. America. Yeah. All right. Thanks everyone for watching the video. If you're new to the channel, hit that like button and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. Brian, any final thoughts? Yeah, this bike can do it all. Uh, it can do it all reliably. The Gorilla Gravity puts a great value on this package and I would buy it again.